Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof of the small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. So, this happened from asteroids, right? At least, that's what we've been programmed to believe. But what if I told you, that this was a phenomenal that has happened from below, and not something that fell from above? Isn't it interesting that what we have thought to be craters, look a lot like geyser? Now, let's compare both side by side. Pretty similar, right? Now, don't you find it strange, that if these were from the impact of meteors, that no such thing is ever by or around these craters? Genesis 7:11 says. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. So we opened the gates of the sky with pouring rain, and caused the earth to burst with springs, so the waters met for a fate already set. We carried him, Noah, on that ark made of planks and nails, sailing under our watchful eyes, a fair punishment on behalf of the one they denied. Are you following me? God opened up the windows of heaven, and water came out through the firmament, and also it sprung up from the ground. Think about these as giant geysers that erupted at the time of the flood. Say in the God of this world and those who are serving his purpose are trying to cover up the fact that God has judged the world before by a flood. And as 2 Peter says, that these scoffers are willingly ignorant, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water, perished. They deny the flood, because, if that happened, then so will his judgment by fire later come to pass. These large craters are also proof of a flood. The evidence is all around us, if you have eyes to see. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Joan of Arc, a 15th century French heroine, burned at the stake at age 19, as a witch and a heretic. Thanks to Catholic Church propaganda, several remains were picked up from the scene of Joan of Arc's execution, which only surfaced in the church in 1867, a piece of burned cloth and fragments of a rib and thigh. These pieces were exhibited by churches and museums as objects of worship and evidence of a great history, until in 2006, two dozen scientists undertook analyses. The results is, the tissue was not burned, but simply stained with soot. The remains of the bones had been embalmed, and they belonged to a man who lived in the 7th-3rd century BC, and a cat. The cat also lived in the 7th-3rd century BC. And he too has had time to be worshipped by pilgrims, and scientists have argued about Jean's fine and noble bone. What an embarrassing situation indeed. Apparently some especially sacred remains are forbidden to be examined for a reason. History Underfoot When they dug a pit near the Kremlin Wall in Moscow, they found wooden log cabins in perfect condition. You can see that the structures were preserved under a multimeter cultural layer, as archaeologists call it. 
But you do not need to be an archaeologist to understand that the clay cultural layer without cataclysms does not happen. The cultural layer is humus and debris, not clay. Interestingly enough, the log cabins were found at a depth of more than 10 meters. Can you imagine that one day someone had a brilliant idea, there is too much dirt in the street, let's fill up the houses to the roof and build new ones. The excavation of Rome is perhaps the most striking example in the theme of buildings piled up with soil. And if seriously, behind all sorts of destruction and wars, the conquest of Rome by barbarians, historians want to hide all this destruction, the accumulation of soil over structures, the era of oblivion after the cataclysm. No one asks the question. What is it, in fact, many meters thick soil, covering all the old buildings in Rome, and not only there? Can you guess at what level the building was buried in the ground? The photo speaks to the fact that a new floor was added to the ruins of the old building. Tell me, is this the cultural layer? Anyway, is it necessary to become vegan in order to be spiritual? Consider the Native American Indians. Most of them were extremely spiritual. But all tribes, with no exception, ate meat. Some tribes ate mostly meat. For example, the buffalo hunting tribes ate mostly buffalo. They lived primarily in the Great Plains of North America, US and Canada, and include the Apache, Sioux, Cheyenne, Ojibwa, Shoshone, and other tribes. There were also great religious traditions in the Middle East, Africa, Eastern Europe, etc., where people herded cattle, sheep, and goats, and lived off of their meat and dairy. Of course the Inuit ate basically 100% meat, the Mongolians ate largely meat, and the Maasai and Hadza tribes still around in Africa, eat mostly meat. Maasai are livestock herders, and the Hadza are hunter-gatherers. Even the Hindu religions who are vegetarians, consider the cow as sacred and load up on nutrient-rich ghee in their diets. Today there is a lot of propaganda for veganism. And this propaganda is no joke. It hits deep, deep in the psychology of us all. It is hard to separate true instincts about veganism with the false instincts that come from the advertising by corporations, who will hire a team of PhD psychologists to sell sugary cereals to children. But an honest look at history will show that great spiritual cultures of the past ate plenty of meat. As a side note, the general consensus amongst Native Americans were that fasting, prayer, and lonely vigil were doorways to spiritual experience. And that the firewater, or alcohol, would destroy your ability to hear the voices. What do you think? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.